So we have a saying within the Polynesian navigating community. He va'a he moku, he moku he va'a. The canoe is an island and the island is a canoe. Let me give you a little background on what a va'a is. A va'a is a Polynesian voyaging canoe that looks very similar to your modern day catamaran. We don't call it a boat because it's steered by a hoi uli, or a giant paddle, and we use the craft of navigation of wayfinding. Wayfinding is the use of the natural elements to guide us. So we only use the sun, the stars, the ocean currents, and activities of birds and sea life to chart our course. I had the honor of sailing Hiki on Alia on a voyage of Malama Hanua, meaning it was a voyage of respect for our planet, all who live on it, and we were spreading awareness about everyone that was caring for our planet. Growing up, I had such a strong connection to the water, and I had a dream to sail on a va'a that had a light of hope that they carried. Now that I was living it, I saw that it was through connection. Connection to myself, connection to nature, and connection to my community that can be the guiding force to help us save our home planet. So one of my favorite things on the va'a is steering the hoi. Uh, one of the nights that we were on night watch, I was steering and our navigator was pointing out the different constellations so we could follow that star line. At night, you can't really see the currents and swells, but you can feel them. While I was guiding and steering the va'a, I could feel her cutting through the water. I could hear the alternating swells hitting the hulls of the, of the canoe. When you're moving in the right direction, everything is in order and working with you. Anytime I got slightly off course, I could feel myself fighting that hoy. I could hear the waves crashing into the hulls instead of gliding with the waves. It was in these moments that I closed my eyes and I'd allow that feeling to realign myself. When I opened them up, I saw the navigator's triangle rising up from the sea, and I was back on course. My captain told me to hold the line, and we were moving forward. In these moments, even when the current was way too strong, my crew members would jump up and help with the load, and I would do the same in return. We helped each other in moments of vulnerability and whatever conditions and weather were given to us in that moment with unconditional support. It made these vast uncharted waters suddenly feel so familiar and I realized that I had found true community in a canoe in the middle of the ocean. During this voyage, we met with nonprofit environmental organizations First Nations people and scientists who are all caring for our planet. I learned that from the Tongva tribe, they don't actually have a word for nature. When the elder who told me this said that, he said that when their language was created, it was long before we had separated ourselves from nature. Before that, we lived as one. We were symbiotically living together. That hit me hard. For 95% of our existence on this planet, we have lived in harmony with nature. And now, at a time where we have felt more isolated, disconnected, and depressed as a society than ever, we have isolated ourselves from the very planet we live on. This woke me up. I was so aware, as someone who I thought I was so connected, I realized how disconnected and even distracted I've been with so much noise in this world. When you live on va'a, you only have what you brought on board. Your food, your belongings, 
your water. It teaches you that you can only live with what you need and you have to be very efficient and minimalistic. So we lived in complete sustainability and in harmony with the ocean. And it made me and reminded me of our quote that we say, he va'a he moku, he moku he va'a. The canoe is an island and the island is a canoe. And just like the canoe is an island, Earth is an island in the sea of space and we are all living on her. When I look at it this way, I can start to see my place in the world and my responsibility to it and how I can actually help connect people to care for her. I know we keep hearing this impending doom and devastation that we're facing with our planet. But at our last port, we met with a team of scientists and researchers from Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and they are giving a voice to the coral reefs through a photo mosaic technology that they developed. What they found was that despite widespread coral bleaching, they actually had coral that was recovering in areas with less than 10% of it actually dying. When they revisited those sites a year later, they actually found an algae that encourages juvenile coral regrowth. It was completely covering those dead areas. I know this seems so small, but it is huge because now the scientists are giving the coral a voice and seeing how it's adapting. Now we just need to pay attention and see how we can evolve and change our own habits to live in harmony with the coral once again, because it was the interconnectedness of the larger ecosystem that allowed the coral to bounce back. This is like finding that star in the night sky when we feel lost in the middle of the ocean. It is a glimmer of hope that if we pay attention, we can redirect ourselves and adapt to those needs. This made me realize that the best way that we can help our planet is by our own personal connections. Because how can we help the environment if we don't know it firsthand? We have to go out and see and observe what it is that we can do to help. Now you don't need to be a master navigator or starting a new nonprofit or being a scientist or a huge environmental activist in order to make a difference. This kind of thinking just leads to inaction and it is the inaction that is the dangerous part because it allows us to fall victim to the darkness and paralyzes us. I know it feels so overwhelming and scary right now, but just as Yvonne Chouinard, founder of Patagonia has said, there is no difference between a pessimist who says, oh, it's hopeless, so why bother doing anything? And an optimist who says, oh, it's all gonna turn out fine, so why bother doing anything anyway? In either case, nothing happens. To do good, you actually have to do something. And we are at such a pivotal moment, it's going to take the collective of us taking action. So I ask you, what are your favorite places in nature? Mine has always been the ocean. And after living on Va'a in that canoe, I learned the whole of the planet and how my actions affect it. My current work is all about connection. I get to create events and opportunities, tying the local community with organizations that are already giving a voice and protecting the ocean, the mountains, the wildlife their own favorite places in their own backyards. So go out and reconnect with your favorite place. What can you do today that can affect those places for the better? What small habits can you change that can positively impact those places? It's going to take the collective taking action and all it takes is all of us doing the best we can do every day. You can go out and volunteer or donate. 
There's so many active groups that are already out there giving these places a voice. And the ability for these places to survive is only as strong as the collective unit that supports them. You support that unit. And with each action that strengthens and supports that unit, it is a victory. And with every victory, it is a glimmer of hope that we are headed in the right direction. We're not lost in the darkness. We just forgot to pay attention. So don't fear the darkness we're in, because sometimes when it's darkest is the best time to find our way. Thank you.